Hey everyone, uh, my buddy Scarlett at Display of Color found these great molds and I have to admit I snatched one up right away and I thought they would be perfect for dry painting. So hang on tight and we're going to do this. Howdy howdy y'all. So I got this great mold. Uh, it's a silicone mold. Let's see if you can see all the... Look at all that detail in these feathers. They must have got a really nice plume feather that just was really airy-like and that is really pretty. There's a, several of them on here. Scarlet with uh, Display of Color was using this for her project and I have to admit I snatched one up right away and I thought it would make for a great mold to do some dry pigment painting on. So, we are going to do that today. And I got a variety of colors uh, from like all different companies that I'm going to use. And I'm even going to try some, I don't know, we're going to do a little experimenting here. It's a, a glow in the dark pigment powder uh, from Stone Coat. Uh, they start carrying Illumilite products. And this is one of their products. So, the theory is, is I'm going to start with a really super, super dark color in the spine area and kind of move out to a lighter tone here. Um, I've got several colors laid out. I may not use them all, but I'll put a picture at the end of this video on the colors I actually do end up using. So I hate to show them in the beginning because sometimes you just don't know with the flow of how things are going to go. And uh, I'm going to use my... Silicone brushes, you can pick these up in most art supply stores. Let's see if I can get in and see if it'll focus on that. That I simply just dip into the powder and paint them on. So we are gonna get started. And here we go. So right now I'm gonna use Blue Diamond from Larez. And I'm having a hard time with it. Focusing on everything. Okay, so this is from Larez, but it's got a lot of glitter in it. So I have to be very careful in applying this because it's going to be very lightweight. So, wish me luck in the beginning here. Let's see what we can do. All right, and hopefully, I can stay on top of this focusing business because that kind of sucks. So, I'm literally just dipping my brush into here. And you see how it taps off, it comes off? Let's see. All right, let me get close here and I'll show you what I'm doing. There we go. So I take the brush, literally dip it in, and it picks it up. If I tap it, a lot of it will come off. So that's what I mean by it being super light. So it's, this stuff doesn't grip very well like the other dry pigments will, so Dip it in carefully. I would not advise tapping too much, but just maybe you just rotate it around to get off the excess. So that's the plan. All right. And it will flake easily. So I'm just going to ever so lightly rub it in place. If you notice right in here, it was easily trying to come off the brush. So definitely, actually I'm gonna go ahead and tap it to get it off the metal. Let's see if I can just keep it on the silicone area. That didn't take much for it to come off, does it? All right. This is a pretty deep little cavity right in this zone here. So I'm going to kind of push it in and move it around in this zone. So this looks like, I believe these are all mica powders as well, but it looks super glittery. So I don't want to say it's glitter, but it looks like it is. And a lot of the mica powders will do that. They'll have that very shimmery kind of appearance to it. Okay. 
Got a lot of metal, a lot of stuff on the metal area. Spin it around. Very focused, so if I'm out of camera, I am sorry, I apologize. Trying to be careful not to sprinkle this in the areas I don't want it. So it's one of those like breathe or hold your breath moment, just should say. Ah. Now I got a uh, couple shades of blues that I would try that I'm thinking about trying very near the spine. So it does a very deep blue color and then fades out quickly to white. That's kind of a loose plan. So some of that next blue will probably go into the spine as well, but I'll have the additional dark blue in there too, so that ought to work out well nice. All right, I'm gonna wipe off the excess on a paper towel. And I'm gonna bring this in a little bit. So you see how I've got some light speckles around here? I'm not that worried about it, but I got a majority of it in the spine. So I'm real happy about that. And now I'm gonna apply my next color, which is gonna be, it's a Caribbean blue. So you can see it's a really pretty blue green, a little bit of green in there, uh, color. So I'm gonna go and work some more into that center area, but start to fan it out. So really concentrate here and then blend it out. So I'm gonna apply it towards the middle on both sides and then with a the brush, blend it out. And then I'll add the lighter colors after that. All right, get that back in focus. And I think today I might be using the cone more than anything just because of all the deep crevices of this feather. Maybe I'm not gonna tap too much so I can get to apply this. And I might go back with a little bit of blue diamond on top of this. And the main reason for that is just so that a little sparkle might go in this blue area. And I'll pick it up here and there. Because you don't really get 100% coverage when you first go over it. It just takes several times of dabbing for you to finally get 100% coverage. So that's how you can introduce a couple different colors in there by doing all these different layers. Especially subtle colors. So I'm just tapping it in right now and getting a lot of this of the blue right next to the spine. A little bit more over here. See, some of it just fell into the spine. I'm not worried about that right now. Because remember, I got that blue diamond first. So I'm just tapping the brush in. Super easy to do. And you'll find in the beginning you're a little bit hesitant about putting color down. And the next thing you know, you are swishing this brush around like a pro. I think it has to do with doing it like a hundred times. <laughs> you're finally like, okay, I got this. Let's get this sucker in there. Alright. All right, I think we got enough blue applied. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm pushing down. So I'm pushing down with my brush and then moving out. 
So it's getting into that color and then pushing the color out. So this is where the texture comes in handy because you can push this color out in the channels of the texture or along the top edge. I'm gonna put a little bit more right there. I'm just dipping it in, dabbing it on top. I'm gonna brush some of this just to get my brush cleaned off a little bit more. So I went down here to clean off my brush and then went back to this spot where I just applied that extra color because I didn't want to have a big blue streak. Do an occasional long stroke, like almost going out to the edge there. And that's so the blue will go to the edge just a little bit. Not everywhere, but just a little bit. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do here is follow through with a little bit of blue and kind of wiggle in on these deep crevices to get the sides real good. And then in here, just to make sure it comes off with enough color. Because this Caribbean blue is more of a powder and less of that light glitter-like texture. So it should stick to the sides really, really well. Okay. Let's see. I'm also kind of making some decisions here. So I wanna work from this edge in because I wanna make sure this edge is just nice and bright. So, hmm. All right. So I have this uh, Sapphire Ghost Blue color and you can see from up here, it's kind of an interference color. And I think that'll be nice and white. You can see it's a really fluffy light powder too. So I'm going to do some layering of the white and I'm going to start on the outside edge. Again, I'm going to tap this color in and I might do go around two times just to get the color in that section. Being that it's a lighter white color, it's kind of hard to tell exactly how much you've got, especially when you're putting it on a white silicone. So I'm gonna be mindful of my uh, leftover resin because usually I fill these molds up, you know, with just whatever color after I've already dry painted them. And I have them on, you know, on standby for whenever I have leftover resin, right? But since I'm using some lighter tones here, I might be mindful and just use either the clear resin or resin that has very light colors because it will probably affect my white. I'm getting some blobs here and that's okay. And I'm just kind of pressing them into places quickly for now. In fact, I might go in around the beginning part and do the same thing. So that way they're both consistent. Try not to get too out of hand. Let me 
get a little bit more here. Oh, that works. All right. So I'm thinking next to this white, I'm going to apply the glow in the dark powder. I honestly do not know if it's a blue or a green. And sometimes they are either one or the other. The powder itself looks a little green, but you know how that goes. Some of the powders, you just can't tell if it's going to glow, you know, which color they're going to glow to. So I thought the interference color would look good during the daytime. And then we have, yeah, it does kind of have that yellowish greenish color. So what I'm going to do here is kind of put some some blobs of powder next, not out on the white there, but just right next to it. If I can. <laughs> and I've got the last color I've got is some of the uh, Bling It interference. Micas that have a super shimmer to them. And I thought that might be another in-between blending color that would look good. So it would kind of work this fluorescent green into that Caribbean blue, be that middle ground, making it work. Am I doing idle chit chat because I'm in the process and I'm kind of like preoccupied? I might be, so. I'm sorry if it's too idly. <laughs> so do you guys have a solid plan when you're working on a project? Do you work it out all the details? Or are you a fly by the seat of your pants kind of artist and always changing on the fly? Uh, leave me a comment. Let me know how you work. I, I'm kind of curious. Everybody works a little bit differently. And there's nothing wrong with either one. My husband's a, an engineer and he really plans things out, works out all the details before starting on a project. And that's just who he is. Um, and then I will kind of do a loose rough idea or a drawing or, <laughs> yeah, actually it's more like a doodle. And um, kind of even work out a little bit of color thoughts. You know, I'll have my notes next to it. And then usually when I'm in the middle of the project, I. Yeah, I'm already changing my mind two or three different times before I'm even really getting going. So that's that's how I work. Okay, so remember like the Caribbean blue, I put my brush in and I swooshed out. I'm gonna be kind of doing the same thing, but I'm gonna go from the white area and move to the Caribbean uh, or the spine. And then I might turn this around because my hands will work better uh, going towards the spine. So this will help blend the white with the uh, glow powder and then the glow powder into the Caribbean color. So I guess I'm kind of swishing but also tapping at the same time. So there's a lot of pressure in there. It's like I'm pushing it down in there and kind of moving it this way. Yeah, I'm going to move it around. If your hand gesture works better by turning your uh, artwork or your project, do it. Um, I mean, we, we draw or write 
certain ways for a long, long time and it feels natural to go this particular direction. Now, it's great to work up skills to be able to, you know, like do circles this way and then do circles that way, you know, that kind of thing. But if the natural flow of working on the project, like for, for me tilting this or turning it around, works better for me, I, just do it. You'll end up being much happier with the results because it will feel more natural moving your hand like that. Okay, so I've got the white and the glow powder pretty much blended in. You'll see some loose stuff on the top. Um, so go from the light to, towards the spine on both sides and I'm happy with that. Um, next up I'm gonna do is, this is some of the, um, is the color on there? No, the name is on, it's on the bottom. So bling it green. See, maybe you can see some of the greenish tones on here. It's an interference color uh, by Color Art. So, let me tap this on the bottom to get it to settle before I open it up. It's also a very light, light, lightweight mica, which is very glittery like. But it's not glitter, it's mica. So, I'm just going to kind of sprinkle it in here and there. Okay, or blob it in, whichever. Just to add another little layer of colors. Okay. This stuff um, and the blue diamond, I keep closed off or closed if I can because of the that lightweight powder. Like I don't want it to get in the air too much. You have to be careful. All right, so I'm just rubbing this in. And when I'm completely done, I'll flip this whole thing over and tap it and it'll get rid of the excess. And then I'll put the excess into a cup for the next time I mix up resin and I'll have like this custom color, um, which will probably be like a light blue with some definite sparkle and a little surprise with the glue powder, that's for sure. So none of my powders go to waste. They will go in the resin eventually. I'll work that up the edge a little bit there. I think that'll be nice and pretty. Mystery bird, what bird did this come from? I'm gonna bring you in just so that you can see what this looks like sitting in the mold. Focus, there we go. Let's see if it will help with a feather to be looking at a feather in the right direction. Okay. So you can see there's a lot of blending going on from the spine out, and I guess vice versa. So you can see the different colors and stuff and see how it goes darker to lighter. And even though there's white powder on top of that, the first color that touched it was that dark blue diamond, then the Caribbean, and then the white. And whatever first color touches that silicone mold will be the color that it gets um, seen from the outside when you pull the resin out of the mold. Hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. So I think that'll turn out well. All right, now I'm gonna show you what it's like when I flip it over. I'm moving some of the colors. Out to the side real quick. Let's see. All right, let's get to focus again. Tap this off. Pretty good there. And 
Pardon me. That'll help. Alright. It's almost like a feathery impression. It's a ghost feather. That's what it is. Ah. Anyway, I'll just fold this up and then pour this into a cup and then I'll have all that extra powder. But you can see probably what's left over. I'll have a very super, super light blue, if anything, like a hint of blue for the coloring. But that, oops, sorry, I bumped it. This is what the mold looks like. So it does have a nice little blend there. Should be interesting. All right. So I'm going to continue this uh, when I get to pulling the uh, resin out of the mold. So, later. So these are the feathers after they've come out of the mold. I'm super happy with them. Got a nice gradation blend, especially in this area and on this side in here. Super happy. Took a little bit of cleanup. Unfortunately, the resin I filled in was like right at the end of the working time. And so I literally had to push it into mold pretty much. But uh, that's okay. I'm still super happy with it. All right, guys, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. More importantly, hit that bell to get notified next time I put something up. Later.